All right, guys, go to Boy 32 here, check it out. So today we're going to be doing a small comparison. Real quick, we're having fun at the range, and Moneybag showed up with a Glock 34. So I am going to do a one-on-one -on -one comparison with the none other than the Springfield 525. This is the XDM. This is basically the comp gun with the cutouts. Essentially, these two guns are almost damn near identical, but we're going to check it out and see how we're doing. Now, everybody's going to expect me, of course, just like everybody else does. Look at those to beat up on the Glock. I'm not gonna do that because I actually think Glock makes a fantastic gun. I'm just not a big fan of it myself. So let's do a side-by-side -side comparison. Here we go. All right, so real quickly, we're taking a look at these guys. Side-by-side -side comparison. Both of these things sit almost identically at the same height, as you can see. Now the Springfield's just a little bit higher. We drop a magazine in there. You can see just like that. Boom. Not bad. Lengthwise, they both, the slides, are almost identical, side by side right there. I love the cuts in them. I mean, basically, it looks like they copied each other. Boom. And I guess the only real big deal here is which one's more accurate. Now, the XDM's got interchangeable back straps. I don't know if this guy's got interchangeable back straps. Looks like it does. Mm -hmm. Okay, it does. I mean, confirmed with the boss over there, he says it does. Now, what's the trigger system you got in here right now? Pyramid. Pyramid. It's a pyramid system. This is a stock system. We're going to go over here. I'm going to trade out shots with it, and uh, we're going to have some fun. Now, one of the things that I intended to do while we were out here is I was going to do some abuse training on that Olight light. Now, the rails on the XDM are almost exactly the same size, so you're probably, in order to use that thing with the XDM, you're going to have to change it out to the Glock system. And we're going to be sticking around here until it gets a little dark so we can do it a real true test. So let's, without further ado, put some rounds on target and see how these things operate. Here we go. We're going to be at 10 yards, which is a good speed for both of these guns. Here we go. Stand by. All right. And of course, I'm not going to have any bias on these. So I'm going to go ahead and shoot the Glock 34 Gen 4 first. Now, one of the things I do like about it is this does have an aftermarket slide release or slide catch, according to some people. But I always use it as a slide release. That's just the way I am, no, neither right nor wrong. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna shoot the top right target with the Glock 34. All right, some would say that that's probably not bad shooting. This is 10 yards. Now, we're going to shoot the target directly to the left of it with the XDM. Now, just to let everybody know, one of the, my thoughts are on the grip, immediately when I grab the XDM, the grip is actually, I think, a little bit more comfortable on the XDM. Um, the dippling on that actually digs into my hands, and, you know, I've got girly hands. But other than that, man, very good shooter. I do like the undercut right there. The, the grips, the is as big as it is, the thumb, the finger grooves don't bother me at all. So I'm pretty impressed with it. The uh, whatever the pyramid trigger did a great job. This is a good gun. I like it. This one's equipped with night sights. These are Trichicon. Front and back, nice. Anything else? No. And I also like to mention when we were doing the review on that H and K, that is a chrome line barrel. Bad to the bone. All right, so here we go. Let's see if we can get accurate on this thing. Now, the one thing that I'm not a big fan of on the XDM, and then it's easy to change out, is this fiber optic is huge. Now, when I got this gun, I picked this thing up used. I paid like $449 for it, which wasn't bad. I'm gonna beat the snot out of it, but I wanted a striker fire gun that I could use in competition. These are Bomar sights. So let's do this. Here we go. All right, well, for me, that's <laughs> this not the sick. I do that all the time. This guy was a lot more accurate for me. Um, the reset on that trigger is long. Let's take a look at that real quick. We've got pull. Watch that reset. That's a long reset for a competition gun, and I think that's one of the only issues that I would have with this thing. Ergonomically, I think this is a better gun, 
that the Glock put it on target better than the XDM. I think we need to do some adjustments on those rear sights because it is shooting a little bit to the left. Up here. So what I'm going to do, just so there's no bias involved in this thing, and I love it, the guys next to us are shooting with one of my favorite guns, the Taurus PT-111 G2 and Flat Dark Earth. So I'm going to let Money Bags go ahead and do the shooting with this guy right here, and let's see how he does it. And I almost imagine he's probably going to knock it all away with this guy. Glock is winning right now. So let's see. Here we go. All right, so I really want everybody to see. This was the Glock right here. This was the Springfield. Now, I think if I move that side over a little bit, but the trigger reset on that thing, that's a stock trigger, it was long. It kind of it, it disturbed the flow, if you know what I'm talking about. But anyway, this is being a really cool one-on-one -on -one competition, one-on-one, -on -one, just a, a, an idea of how those two guns will operate from the first standpoint. I've never shot a Glock 34, and I've never really shot that Springfield until now. But this is actually turning out pretty, pretty cool. Let's go back. We're going to see uh, money back shoot it. Here we go. All right. I'm going to do the uh, XDM 525 on the bottom left. Sounds good. It's a lot better than any. I have to admit the trigger, the reset is kind of long. It is long. That's the I, only, that's the actual only, yeah, that's the only complaint that I have. And it feels good. I'm used to finger grooves, but this not having any, it fits the hand very well. I think that uh, with some sandpaper type talon grips on that thing, that, that'd be the only thing I would make a change on it. Shooting elevation is perfect, but it's shooting left in my book. Maybe I just need to get used to it, but I, aftermarket trigger on that. And I hate having to do an aftermarket trigger, but that's what I have to do it if I'm going to shoot it. The sights are kind of big, too. The front, the front is very big. They cover the whole thing. All right. Look at him, folks. Here he is. Money. Oh, what the... All right, that's good shooting there. Monero Bago did a pretty good job. This was a Springfield right here. He was hitting low right there, which made me feel, actually he was hitting tight, but then the Glock came in right here. So he's doing okay. So we got the two guns, these guys right here. I'm gonna give the edge to the Glock on this one. Uh, great handling gun, smooth trigger, and I think it comes down to it, but they're damn near identical in almost every way, uh, but, this guy with an aftermarket trigger, that reset, is absolutely stupid. Watch this. Trigger pull on this guy with the, uh, what trigger is that? What trigger is this? Pyramid. Pyramid. I keep forgetting. Versus this guy right here. And that'll make all the difference in the world. And here's the reset. Long, long reset. So anyway, guys. If you wanted to hear me say it, Glock 34 beats out Springfield. So there it is. Coda Boy 32, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. I know it was short, not to the point, but anyway, it is what it is. Sport red, white, blue. God bless America. God bless his men, women in uniform. 24 7 for our freedom. Freedom is not free. These things are bad. Yeah. Mmm. Pretty neat.